Hello and welcome into the SoRare Andrews podcast brought to you by SoRare Data. I am Andrew Laird. You can find me as Lairdino on SoRare. Joined once again by Andy Black, Black on SoRare, today to talk about something that starts with an F. We haven't even figured out what the F is yet, but I know that there were a lot of them earlier this week, so we're going to just keep it going. Andy, how's it going? It's going well. Going well. Um, yeah. Um, you asked me what the what the F could be, and we threw around a few ideas. Um, and then I just thought of free to play too, which we're not talking about that. Uh, I don't think we're not going to talk about it because oh. I think so. I think we're going to talk about the announcement that happened yesterday, and I think one of the funniest things that I find also an F word that came about was that they came out with all of these like, Hey, we're going to do, you know, domestic league competitions and commons are going away and we have all these new cat modes. And it just feels like the only thing people can talk about is the new deadline and how people with Asia cards are not getting full utility out of their cards anymore. And it's just like full utility, full utility right. And like there was so much in that announcement and it felt like the deadline change was just kind of like, oh yeah, and by the way, we're changing the deadline. And all of a sudden, like that's what everybody is focusing on, which not to say it shouldn't be fo you know, focused also in F-word. But I don't know. Now it, we're going to do this whole podcast, like Mike Baskin just mentioned, the that whole Holly Shand is a female Nellis. Ooh. Um Oh, they gave her a Liverpool stack. That's fun. Nellis had to pay for his. Yeah. Uh, hmm. I don't know. People, sorry. People in chat, thank you to everybody who was joining us, <laughs> are talking about FPL influencers now getting, FPL influencers are getting uh, free limited stacks to play. So are, Andy, why do you think there are FPL people getting stuff all of a sudden? I have no idea. I honestly don't have the slightest slightest clue why they would they would use that as like a i don't know maybe a marketing tactic or something I or some, something yeah i think the only reason why they would contact like fpl experts is cuz they're obviously uh they they obviously have like a history of playing in games that have like salary caps and with all the cap mode stuff they're like oh these are the people that really should be providing <laughs> uh information for all oh, those boy. new modes right i mean yeah yeah, for sure. For sure. No, I think it's fine. I mean, like they, they have always set aside stuff for, and when I say stuff cards for like marketing purposes and, um, yeah, I, I saw some stuff, people were upset that they might be like getting pulled from the reward pools. I mean, I think it was all, always pretty transparent that some of that stuff was, was set aside for purposes like this. So whatever. Are people really up thinking it came from like the reward pool? I saw mentions of that, yeah. If there's any reason to be upset, it's that those people are now going to be beating us in competitions with their full Liverpool stacks, unless it's a classic so where where you're they're like, oh yeah, you get uh Adrian and uh I don't even know who's not playing for them anymore. Shamikas um, and Fabinho and it was Yeah, here's a Luis Diaz. <laughs> they got Salah, Nune uh Darwin, um Simikas, Trent, Becker. I mean, it's a pretty good team. Not gonna still lie. Still no midfielder though. Oh really? I mean, it's Liverpool. Still no uh, mid midfielder. Yeah. Mm. Ha. Ha. Now they have Got to lie. Got him. You know, I think it is kind of annoying though that like it's a little disingenuous when they're like, I, I assume they're going to use that to promote it to their audience. Sure. And it's a little disingenuous when it's like, Hey, look what I got for, uh, like how they're, are, are they going to explain how they got that? Why they have that full stack? Um, because Liverpool stacks, not exactly cheap, mm -hmm. um, even in the limited variety. And, uh, it is a little odd to be like promoting that to people and then being, I don't know. Um, like, what's, What's really funny about this is that the transparency is actually working against them. If they had just given these influencers like half an ETH and they're like, hey, just go yeah. out and buy these five cards. 
we'd right. all be like, oh, wow, they're actually like putting money in. Yeah, would, they're, they're playing. Yeah, they're actually playing. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. man. Full transparency, not always a great thing. Also, an F word, full. I think I used that one already, though. Anyway. No, I think it's good that it's transparent. We all we all know what's going on. And I assume that, you know, anybody that does research that's within their audience will, will know that like, yeah, this was, was given to them. They didn't acquire it on their own. Uh, it's part of a promotion of some sort. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hashtag ad. Yeah. Thanks everyone who who's joined us live. I must say that nobody mentioned it, but we started on time. And I just want to say that if you're going to point out the bad, you may as well point out the good that we started exactly at one o'clock Eastern today, like we said we were going to. But yeah, thank you to everybody who's joined us. If you guys could please hit the like button, at least for us being on time, that's always really appreciated. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. The Yeah, so the announcement yesterday, like my opinion on it, I feel like was should have changed by now because... Sean and I weren't going to talk about it yesterday on the strategy show. The announcement came out. We got all into the weeds about the deadline and we didn't really have time to like dive into the different cap mo capped uh, divisions that they have and how to play them and all this stuff. But like a day later, and I have looked at all of this stuff, it just still feels really complicated. And hopefully I have to scroll back here because I'm not super familiar with FPL content creators. Molly Shand, Holly Shand, Holly. Hopefully she can just explain it to all of us because, man, I there's just a lot going on. And I, even though we shouldn't feel this way, it really feels like we should just be, play them all. <laughs> yeah, I think it. I think what's. Uh, I think there's a lot going on there. I mean, how many new what is it 12 new capped modes or something um or i guess maybe it's nine new capped modes i don't know it's a lot of stuff it's a lot and i think that the difficulty uh confusing part here is going to be the fact that like we still don't know what the rewards are going to be so to like build any content or like try to figure out and tell people play this one don't play that one do this there's no you can't do that yet. So like really like you were talking about discussing it on the strategy show, there's no strategy to, to discuss yet because you don't know what the, what's at the other end of the pipe. I mean, where are the rewards at? Are there good rewards in the one with the threshold, which is also weird to me that one of them you can earn the threshold and the other two in each scarcity you can't is my understanding. Is that right? That is correct. Weird. Yeah, so it's funny you bring that up because when I saw more cap modes, I just assumed that meant thresholds in all of them. Because I was like, oh, cap mode means threshold. But it's like, yeah. oh, no, 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 just one of them. It's 240, which is not like, or I mean, I guess is what we're, I was going to say it's not what we're used to. We're not used to any of this. But it's, you know, halfway between 220 and 270, which are the other cap modes some of which have XP and captains, some don't. Yeah. Kickoff, which is on that chart, is on like the level of all the cap modes. That doesn't require as many cards. Like it's super confusing. Or, I mean, surely we'll figure it out quickly. And it's not that, I mean, yes, it is confusing. And I don't know. That's all I had to say about it. It's just confusing. Yeah. I feel like the lowest capped mode is just kind of like your underdog replacement. Yes. Um, and then I don't, I don't really know what the the higher one. I don't really know what the point. Two seventy is specialist. And then the middle one's just threshold. Threshold. Weird. <laughs> All I'm gonna say is it's weird, and uh, it's gonna be weird prioritizing which one to play. Did you, so I've had this question, uh, I think you might have brought it up actually, but if not, somebody brought it up. Like, did you get the feeling that you were only allowed to play one? Yeah. 
Do we but know? I've, yet? I've, heard, I've heard that's not the case. Okay, that's what I figured. I'm going to get into the training announcement today as well because that was also classic Sora announcement where they were we were like, oh, okay, and we have this like one really big question, and they're like, all right, we'll see you later. And I don't like, think. I, well, I think that I think you're maybe like reading too much into it, but oh, am I? Okay, I, I think so. The training thing or the, yeah, the, the training? Thing. Okay. Well, I'm, well, it's funny you say that because I'm not the one who read into it. Like somebody asked me that and I was like, oh, I don't know. And I asked you and a bunch of other people. So I guess I'll get into that. So rare in, in uh, announced or gave us a few more details today in the always appreciated Twitter spaces that everybody oh. loves to listen to. <laughs> There's no, I'm sorry. I'm, I just can't. I hate Twitter Spaces. I just hate them. Do you remember? You're, I think I asked you. Do you you do you remember Clubhouse? Clubhouse? I didn't didn't use that one either. I saw that and I was like, that seems really dumb. And then Twitter's like, hey, we're gonna do one too. And I'm like, oh, also dumb. I guess Clubhouse does still exist. I thought they went out of business, but um, maybe I'm. I guess I'm wrong because they. Well, I guess they still have a web presence. I don't. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I don't understand why we need them. Yeah. That's all. Anyway, so on the Twitter spaces today, I don't even know who's on it. I was just reading people's reactions to it. I didn't listen to it because I hate Twitter spaces. But there was details about the our new training that basically everybody gets XP and you can set. And now this is where it gets complicated because from what I heard was you can set a minimum of three training lineups and those get uh, double XP. And it was like, no, no, it's a maximum of three. And it's like, well, this is very different because if I could set a hundred training or however many I set, like I would set all my training lineups if I knew that they got double XP. And those who don't set them get the regular whatever they get. So do we have, a, does anyone know about this? The wording that they used is you only need to set three training teams. Right. You only need to. Yeah. But what if I want to set more? Do I get I more XP? Think you can. No. <laughs> no? Okay. No, so it's a maximum it of three. They, they, they made it easier, not the same. <laughs> but but easier, the but it, but being able to set as many as I want is different than what happens now because if I can set as many as I want and get double XP, or I set none and everybody gets the standard XP, that's different. If it were, if it was double XP, then it would just be you get double XP on all of your training lineups. Yeah, but but it's that and, or or you get double on the training lineups you set, or single XP on the ones you don't set, like the cards that are not in training lineups. So people right. who don't want to tr do training lineups still get XP, but if I want to do training That's lineups, just I mean, th then you're just back to everybody has to do training because there's an advantage to doing it. Anyway, Mike Basson said only 15 cards get the double XP. Okay. I, wonder, I wonder if they'll go to the get to the point where you can just enter any uh, like players. Like if I want to do 15 goalkeepers, I wonder if they they could allow for that. Hmm. Like no chance. But yeah, that's kind of a silly. <laughs> uh, get all those Freds in there. Yeah, yeah. Another F word, by the way. A big F word. Four letter F word, if you will. Yeah. I agree with SR Monkey here, who says three and three is enough. Five to ten would be better. I in fairness, SR Monkey is like the most dedicated person to training lineups on the platform. So I could see that being a big change. SR Monkey also a recent guest on the uh, John Nellis So Far So Rare podcast. Anyone very uh, enjoyable listen, so go check that out. I I don't know. I didn't hate training lineups as much as other people. So I let's mean, just call it what it is. This is a win. Let's take the win. Yes, you're right. You're right. Let's take the win. Mm -hmm. And even even with it being a win, I think it's still like underwhelming. Um there like I still think that there's a better idea there to like unveil. Um, I don't know what it is. I'm not going to like pretend to have the answer there, but I think that there's a better idea on ways to make training interesting. 
Um, and I think somebody even mentioned, like, uh, does this open the door for them to be like, oh, well, your prize for this game week is you want a fourth training lineup um, for next game week. I don't want a f- to set another <laughs> damn training team, okay? Like, don't give that to oh, me. Oh, that would be time. so funny. You have unlimited training lineups next about, week. <laughs> yeah, like, if you're going to give me a prize that goes, like, it's related to training, like, maybe I get 3X instead of 2X on my – three lineups that, that trained or something like that. But in the end, I think that there's a better idea for training. I don't know what it is, but I think that they need to still keep working. This shouldn't be their uh, final solution on training. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Mike Bassman was saying it suggests that more game modes are not going to need XP, which I suppose is true. Yeah, it's a reasonable, reasonable response. And I will say that after the announcement, what I what I think is, is that, yeah, we definitely need more game modes. For sure. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, there's like a billion now. I just want to I like I, I the anticipation for January 31st when like the new when like the cat mode game weeks go live. And there's just like endless lineups that you can enter and there will be lots of anxiety trying to figure out which what what am i supposed to do what is the right um what is the right divisions to play yeah i'm gonna be very anxious that that day excuse me yeah it's it's a lot it's a lot the so did um Do you have a theory on why Cap 220 doesn't have XP? No. Or Captain? Like the 240 I get, because they're like, oh, we don't want everybody to score so many points that we have to pay out all this ETH. What I don't get is why don't they just, like, honestly, just up the the cap and then let everybody... And then, honestly, all the people complaining about, like, their XP not mattering... um, I guess maybe they'll complain that the cap's too high at that point. Maybe I don't know, right. but it just seems like low hanging fruit from their perspective to like be like, yeah, XP still matters, your bonus still matters, um, but then just increase the the score right. needed for the threshold by five right. points. Whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was talking to somebody when they f- announced the first cap mode, the two forty for the threshold. And I was like, what do you think that they do first? If like, if so few people are winning thresholds, I don't think that they can let that go for that long. Sure. And so it's, so my question was like, do you think that they raise the cap or lower the points needed to, um, the points needed to read like the threshold? Yeah. The response I got was that they obviously reduce the points needed because they've already named it cap 240. Right. And so as long as you don't have to rebrand. And, and honestly, that's just an easy lever to kind of move, mm-hmm. I would think. Do you think that they start doing some really wonky stuff? Like this week, cap 240 threshold is 200. And we all just rushed there. Maybe. I mean, they did stuff like that around like Christmas time. Like they had a weekly, like I guess that was two Christmases ago or whatever. They had like the weekly challenge where they were offering thresholds uh, there, and they actually doubled the threshold during that time period. So it was like 0.04 instead of 0.02. And then didn't they do something this year as well? I don't remember for ETH. Yeah, I don't remember. Maybe I'm crazy. <clears throat> Could be I'm a separate. Crazy. Yeah. yeah, that's a separate issue though. That's fair. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm i excited to see what happens and like where everyone goes. I do think that this, like what I'm particularly interested in is to see how many people take really good cards out of the regular competitions and put them into cap 270. Yeah. Because like 270 is where you can like win the better tier cards. It's, it's very much like 
uh, NBA, like the champion NBA contest where you can win like the next tier up. And 270 is like high enough where you can get some like really good cards in there, especially with our, the, those wonderful one week cheat codes that we found last week with Guzan and uh, Miles Robinson. Yeah. But the, so like the way that I looked at it for NBA was when they have more contests, it's like, well, that's more places that Luka Doncic is not where I'm competing. And so like, this is kind of interesting. It's like, are people going to take like really good cards out of like all-star rare pro or all-star pro, I think we call it and put them into cap 270. And like, that's going to be, obviously the rewards are going to determine that. Like if the top rewards in cap 270 are tier three super rares, no, nobody's going to go in there and they might not even for tier two super rares. Yeah. But and there are enough tier ones. Like, yeah, I, that's the problem though. They can't, they, with this many contests, like they can't give away that many tier one, super, tier, tier one super rares are better. Yeah. And um, even with tier twos, there's like, we know where that they, they kind of have to pull from and it's that tier three pool. I mean, they'll definitely pull from there. There's no yeah. doubt about that. Which, which I do agree with XMK tier fours and tier fives are coming. Like, more yeah. tiers will definitely help, but even like a, even like a tier four prize there, like, um, let's say that's the equivalent of a tier three SR right now, man. Um, with all of the new SR capped modes, those will have a little more value, but oh, yes, but honestly, like, I still don't think that there's going to be like this big rush to to acquire and win tier three super rares. Like it, I think this helps. Like I think this, the, that all the extra capped modes helps their value, but I don't think it helps. It's not going to move the needle that much. I, I do think that the benefit of tier three super rares is that, and I'll preface this by saying I don't win that many of them. So like maybe I'm way off on this, but it does feel like you're more likely to get like a playing tier three super rare than like a tier three rare. Like if you win a tier three rare, it could be a guy that was just like toast. And like so tier three. I, I've won two tier three super rares in the last week. Both of the guys play. They're actually, they're uh, like 40. One of them is 48 uh, L15 and one of them was 50 L15. Yeah, like the last the last two tier three super rares I, I won have been like very, I, I sold one of them. The other one banged a hundred this past week. So like, of course. You oh, can the get, Irene? Yeah. Majiva I saw that they, they immediately minted his unique. <laughs> Did they really? Oh, I think it's great. on sale right now. Yeah. I love it. I love it. As they should. <laughs> How much does that go for? Not that I can um, buy it. It may have already sold. I think it did already sell. So. Let's see. Oh, it's his second unique too. Someone named Anonymous three days ago. 0. 0.66. You could have had it. That's wild. Wow. Hmm. Would that be a would that be a tier three unique? It was a tier. It was a tier three super rare. Yeah, yeah. So, I will. So, I mean, so right now, other than all of the super rare divisions that they have currently, like old division two, you can now win super rares in cap two forty, cap two seventy, super rare kickoff, and cap two twenty for super rare. Which seems like a lot of places for super for this, like that. It feels like you need a lot of supply for that. We don't know how many they're going to give out in the like the rare. I assume that rare two forty, which is the threshold, and rare two seventy. Like I can't imagine they give more than like three or five super rares, right? I don't remember how deep they went for specialist. If anyone in chat remembers, although it's probably up right now, we still have super rare contests, right? Or we we still have specialist contests, right? Let's see. Rare specialist pays out 16 super rares. That's wild. And none are tier tier two. Excuse me, none are tier three. So there's probably enough. What will be really interesting, and you are much closer, uh, not closer, you are able to do this now, I believe. But competing for uniques, 
so like right now, are there two contests that pay out uniques? It's basically just super rare specialist and all star. Does all star? I'll be honest, I don't. I don't even know. I know all star doesn't. It's only like the special competition. Specialist, and then kickoff unique mm. gives out three. Is so that like, a tournament that's i mean that's i guess that's open this week because that's normally not open right that is open this week yes um it's that's all um, my giveaway is three uniques it's five players with an average of 55 or below and you can play up to four super rares and you can play up to two uniques and they pay it pays out three tier three uniques nice. three tier nice. three uniques <laughs> that's the prize pool the entire yeah. prize pool there are currently 23 people entered. Um, mm. But you go from that <clears throat> to now cap 240, cap 270. I'm sorry, super rare 240, super rare 270, unique kickoff, unique 220, unique 240, unique 270, all paying out uniques. I mean, they have plenty of uniques to give away. So I don't see, I don't see the issue really there. Yeah, that's fair. What but, do you think the best one they'll give away is as a prize? Oh man, like, will they give will they give away tier ones even? I guess that'll probably be like the top prize. It'll be like a tier one. They ain't giving away any stars. I I was trying to like, like, do you think they reward like the Tony Cruz unique the day after he announces this is his last season, <laughs> like stuff like that? <laughs> maybe although i think yeah. i feel like the, the rewards go that way like you win something and it's like a guy oh he announced his retirement yeah yeah or like neuer a neuer unique that's got to be one of the first yeah. ones they give out right yeah when i saw uh crapu Kre in the uh, uh america uh reward pools i was like of course he's in there i thought he, i thought i saw he was training the other day really or, you know on Didn't the training pitch humor? Yeah. I mean, it was months ago now, right? I guess it was only like three months ago. Maybe not. He had some sort of sweatsuit on. He's walking. Right, right. He was walking. That's a plus after a broken femur. Anyway, do you think you will enter these contests to try to win uniques? Sure. I mean, but, but I think it goes kind of with what, uh, and I don't know, I'm going to butcher your pronunciation. Uh, panache, panache, pa Peru. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'll give you a crack at it, Andrew. Please just finish what you were saying. Though. Well, I, I think it really comes down to like, what are the rewards and where are they at? And if, um, if, if they're appealing and, and it's something that, that looks like they're giving away decent rewards, then sure. Um, like for a while, they were giving away some pretty good specialist uh, super rare rewards. They were just mm -hmm. tier one. And I think they still are doing it, but it's there were you know midweeks where it was kind of soft and it, they were good spots to play it. Um, let's be real. That's what it's going to come down for come down to for everyone on the platform is are there spots that make sense for my gallery to play it? And when the answers to, the, to that question is yes, you're going to put a lineup there. So yeah, I'll go after those cards when it makes sense. Like if they're giving away a decent number and a decent quality, then yeah, I'll prioritize it. If it's better somewhere else, then, then I'll move there. Mm -hmm. How many do uniques do you have? I think like five. So you're well away from the 10 to take you out of, like kickoff feels like the easiest one i think yeah that'll be actually at some point that'll be an interesting conundrum for people yeah is you know do you it, when you're sitting on nine of any scarcity and like when do you when do you make that jump to the next one and knock yourself out of that tournament what happens if you acquire the 10th i guess it doesn't matter it's at the game week. like i wonder if we're going to see because I don't think kickoff or yeah, kickoff and 220 don't have XP. So I wonder if we'll see people loaning uniques or super or whatever the scarcity is that they're close to, like loaning them out for the game week or for the day, enter kickoff because they have 
nine. Yeah, it gets them to nine, and then as soon as the the I mean, uh, that's a great point. And and honestly, you bring up another point that they were not clear about again um, uh, today on the Twitter Spaces. They talked about loaning. I heard about this. Yeah. And when I say that they talked about loaning, they were like, um, "We have no idea what to do." <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And they're they're. I guess, discussing it, working on it, talking about it. But I think it's pretty clear that they still don't have a, a, a an answer to like, is a, it, what is okay and what's not okay. And uh, it's important that they iron that rule out. We need to know what is okay. Because I, I mean, I'm in discords where people that, you know, there's channels of people are like, Hey, does anybody have an extra forward this week? Or anybody got an yeah. extra midfielder? Is that okay? I don't know. So like I've com- completely shut it down to where it's like, I, I don't want to, I don't want to get my account suspended or banned over, over some of this. So it's like, I'm not touching it until they, they say what, what is okay and what's not okay. Yeah. It's a, it, I don't think people realize how tricky it is because of the, like where so rares put themselves in the whole like own your game these are yeah. your nfts you can do whatever the hell you want with them exactly and because there's also like hey don't cheat that i mean right? my my perspective is own your game they're my my cards i can do what i want with them and i would love to help out a buddy or whatever but then again um you know with them being so unclear and i have heard about people getting uh, their account suspended and stuff yeah. like that. I ain't touching it. I I think the so I talked about this with somebody earlier today, and the the problem is that they because they don't have a rule, or it, excuse me, it's it's weird that they don't have a rule and they also try to enforce it. So they're like, I think yeah. How rule, do you how do you do that? Somewhere it says like repeated use or something like that, and it's like, well, how many is that? And then they're like, well, we don't know, but if it's blatant and it's like, well, what's blatant? And it's, yeah. and, there, and then there's also the, we monitor this stuff really closely. And then there's a, some tweet, Hey, this person's doing all this. And they're like, Oh, thanks. We'll look into that. And it's like, how did right. you not catch this one? They're like and, clearly farming referral rewards and passing cards to get the referrals. And yeah. Uh, XMK said, is the XP loss a much bigger loss now with the new training? could be the opposite like you can make the training you can make it back up right faster yeah or just especially just, if, especially or just when, when there's no XP. gallery right yeah um I, the the i i understand why they they don't have a no loaning rule like the 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 reason is specifically because we own this stuff. They can't tell us like that they we can't give it to somebody. I suppose what they can do is say you cannot enter a contest of you know a, one of our tournaments with a card that you do not own. I don't know how you prove whether you own it or not. It goes back to the whole they're just gonna have to trust us. But like yeah. and I think Jimmer's said it for years, just like is, they just need to develop some sort of formal loan process and that'll be the rule. I guess. I don't know. Like even like us playing our side games on the side and somebody wins a prize and I send them a Fred Emmings. Like, does that look like, is that going to trigger anything on their end? It's one of those. Obviously not. But... Well, it's obviously not, but also like, why not? Why doesn't that trigger something? Yeah. And they go, cause it's just Fred. <laughs> I don't know. I, that the loan, t- the loan thing is, it's just tiring because it's like we, we don't get anywhere. There are people on both sides who are like so passionate that they are right. Yeah. And there's basically like two places in the terms that pe- that each side goes to. One is like, you can do whatever you want. And the other is like, don't yeah. cheat. And they're like, see? And nobody sees. All right. We've gone 35 minutes and we haven't talked about game week deadlines. Oh, yeah. Said, yeah. Um, I... I'm fine with it, to be honest. That's all. That's all you're gonna say. I'm fine with it. Yeah. Well, I'm that's my f- drops the mic, walks out of the room. That's my four letter F word. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> no. Um. 
I haven't looked at the schedule. I do have a few K League cards. From what I gather, it's really the K League that is the one that gets in trouble. Yeah, that's what I've been reading. And which is a bummer because two of my better cards, at least they were good when I got them. They're not so great anymore. Um, are K League cards. I haven't seen like which game weeks it becomes I think a problem. It's very I, confusing. I've seen I feel like I've seen some people be like, yeah, it's only three games, and other people are like, it's 12. And like uh. so the confusing thing was like I've I, there's a K League so rare account that like tweeted something out. Uh oh, and Turkey too, apparently. But there was a K League account that tweeted out like it's 30 or 25 percent of their games or something, and then they mentioned however many game weeks. The guy today on Twitter spaces was like it's actually only seven games or something, but it's like, I don't, I don't know. I, honestly, I'm not going to do the research and I'm not going to look into it, but it's like, at some point, I'm sure they're both right in a way. And it's like, yeah, it's seven games, but now they're double game weeks. So it actually affects more, uh, more game weeks in total. Like, yeah. I, I say this with, with, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know what I'm looking for, but I'm going to say this. Mm -hmm. so, I don't trust so rare on that. Yeah. There are plenty of other people who have go, who have dived into the schedule or know the K league schedule better than so rare. And I believe them. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, the other, the other thing too is, is like, it's not also as simple as like you have one, like, even if it's just one game that game week, what if that player completed your team for that game week? Now you have three players and two guys with double game weeks the previous game week, and you don't have a guy in this game week. Like it, it messes, it messes with things. I'm I'm glad you brought that up. And XMK in chat said the same thing. And and that's something I hadn't thought of at all. And I can't remember who it was in some Discord I'm I'm in. But that was the point. They were like. But now, if I have players in the double game week, that means they're not available for the weekend, most likely. Yeah. And so that's actually, and, and if it's a goalie, now I don't have a team because you have to play goalie in most of these competitions. So that's actually two game weeks that are, that's affected, not yeah. one. And so, so we're counting like, oh, it's only 12 games or however many games it is. It's like, well, we don't play this game based on games. We played on game weeks and- yeah. If, if you take one player out of a game week and put him in another, now that's two game weeks that are affected, not one. Yeah. And that's why, like, that that falls under the whole, like, because they don't play the game like we do, they don't realize the implications of some of the things that they sure. change. And that's, like, a major one for me. I do think there's probably opportunities there, though, now for players that play in the K-League to really dig into the schedule find those island games that are like by themselves and um, you know, like make a stack for that game week. But with that said, who knows if they'll change something else at this point. So like, I probably wouldn't touch it with a, you know, 10 foot pole, but, <laughs> but I feel like the absolute opportunity there. most dangerous thing you can do is plan months in ahead. In yeah. Like, <laughs> Oh man. Right. Um, also, um, so like my my whole perspective of the thing is I've wanted the game week uh, deadline changed for a long time. Um, I do think that like Sean kind of put it pretty decently the other day. Like the I, I like the time, but the time needs to like like they needed to come up with uh, answers to these circumstances before they probably put the change in, or if they think that they can solve the problem by you know, March or whenever these double game weeks start to hit. Great. Um, mm -hmm. But communicate it. Like if you think, if you, if you're making the change, but you're planning on uh, a fix for some of the scaling stuff, say it. If you're not planning on fixing it, well, I don't know if that's where we're at right now, but there, you shouldn't change the de deadline without some fix that, that is acceptable for the entire community. Yeah. It did feel like, they were like, hey, what about these games? And they're like, yeah, it's a double game week now. Yeah. Like, That's it. That's least, all we're going to say. At least, meet them, at least meet the K-League people halfway and say, um, you know, uh, yeah, they're double game weeks now, but now we're going to play best ball on uh, the yeah. soccer platform. 
and you get the best best score of those two games. Like, um, yeah, does it does it 100% uh, give the utility back to people that are playing uh, K League? No, but um, does it give them a slight edge or benefit in those particular game weeks? Yeah, mm -hmm. does it equal out? I don't know, but somebody else uh, I think even mentioned the average of the two scores, which I think is a pretty cool idea. Um, I read that in a Discord somewhere. I don't know if, remember who put it, but um, I was like, yeah, that's an interesting idea. So like, if you have a guy that scores 50 and then 80, they get, I don't know what the hell the average of those two is, but. <clears throat> do you think they can technologically do that? Sure, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't what? seem hard to me. <laughs> I think it's I think it's basic math. <laughs> so do you, do you think they can do it? <laughs> anyway, uh, I think <laughs> yeah, it was it's a bummer. I the one suggestion I saw that I don't think really solves the problem because the schedules actually overlap more than people think, but. Basically, like when the European seasons are over, then they switch the deadline back to the early one, which is kind of funny to me because that makes it like, I don't think the current, though certainly the current deadline, sorry, the new current one, the new one, excuse me, is not early enough for like MLS. Like we're not going to get MLS news right. like Friday morning. Nope. But we really won't get it if they move back to for me, 6 a.m. on Friday yeah. just to accommodate the Kaylee games. Well, essentially, for you, a 6 a.m. lock time is actually 10 p.m. the night before. Yes. Unless you're getting up at 5.30 to check news. Yeah. Agreed. Like, yeah, it's still the same. <laughs> so, <clears throat> um. Didi Sorare said, some of these press conferences have info that is so vague that it won't even help determine a lineup. Nothing Pep says will tell you for sure. Oh, I just lost it. What is front six is going to be for a game two days away? So I think that's also the funny thing is that everyone's like, oh, yeah, all the info's out. And it's like, well, some of it is out. Yeah. You know, you know who it's out for? The Premier League. Yeah. And apparently that's all we care about right now. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, some of... Some of the info is vague. Some of it's not vague, though. It's like Johnny has COVID. Johnny won't be at game. Like that's what we're that's what we're hoping to get. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that info does pop out. Um, a lot of times it doesn't. Um, but yeah, and you're right. It's we know what it's for. It's mm -hmm. this is all for EPO. I'm. I haven't. I mean, it, I literally used to do this for Rotowire. So I like, I would spend all day Friday just like writing notes about players who were in or out. So I don't really know what the, I don't remember what the timing is for the non Premier League league. Like, it doesn't seem to me that like Serie A or League Un would be like really timely with that stuff. I always feel like the Bundesliga is Friday morning, like, yes, pretty regular. Yes, they were before the Premier League, but that's, you know, the regular. Yeah. You know, strong German engineering that gets them ready for it or whatever. Uh, of course. <laughs> yeah, I just, I joked somewhere. I'm just glad they figured out how to get rid of all European DNPs now. Thank goodness. Um, the, yeah, that, I don't, I don't know what the solution is that they can come up with, but I agree with you that it does seem weird that they do seem to recognize that this isn't the final solution. Yeah. They won't actually say that. Uh, uh, they did, though, I think. They were like, we're working towards, and it sounds like either it's rolling locks or something, but it just... Was this... So, why did they just say it? What they, are, so they said to? this. Was this on the on the spaces, or was this like the the uh, assumed message was, from the Zora tweet? No, I think it was a Zora tweet. tweet yeah, and it's like... It may have is, gotten deleted. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> like this is not this is not a form of communication here. Yeah. Uh, no, I. But I think it would be helpful if they were like we we recognize that this hurts the utility of some cards, and we are working on a way to make it better. Such as, well, maybe not even a such as, but like it just yeah. seems like they're like yeah, sorry, and then they just 
we just keep going. Yeah, it was more like, um, yeah, we're we're sorry about that, um, but uh, <laughs> like that was kind of their like their like explanation for it. Yeah, we're we're sorry about that. It, well, how about how about you uh, maybe try try to find a solution that it's a compromise of some sort. From from what I got from responses to the spaces is like. We'll have an announcement in a week or so like that will essentially like explain why we did this. So everyone's like, all right, they're going to announce the Premier League and like the Premier League press conferences and like that's the solution. It's kind of weird to me to like make a major change to a global fantasy football platform for a single league, even if it's the biggest one in the world. Yeah. You know what I'm surprised they didn't they didn't do? I'm surprised they didn't announce it as going back to the original game week deadline. Because uh, this was the original game week deadline, if I remember correctly. Wasn't it noon Eastern? I only say that because I thought <clears throat> I thought Maxine it depended on uh, daylight savings time. Um, oh, Maxime's um, club name is moved the deadline to 5 p.m, which is 11 a.m. Eastern. So maybe that's, I don't know. Yeah, where does, but I, where does HG stand on this? <laughs> I, he wants it back at 5 p.m. Paris time. I don't think he has many Asia cards, so I don't think he actually gets I haven't. In fact, they probably talked about it today on the um, on the Sora Data Twitch stream. So uh, if anybody French wants stream. to go learn French and then watch it and then tell us what happened, please do so. But yeah, it is weird that they're, I mean, we're literally just going back to where we were or close enough to where we were. The time that they decided was unacceptable, by the way. And that's why they changed it to where it is now. What's Moldy talking about here? Are they going to change the assist rules as well? So does FPL have like a hockey assist or something? Yes. So I really, really hope they don't do this. Not a hockey assist. <clears throat> the, it's, a, it's literally called a fantasy assist like an assist that didn't actually happen. So if like you uh, shoot the ball or, or no, it happened the other day in the uh, Arsenal Tottenham match, Saka like basically took a shot from the uh, touchline. It went off Larice and in, it was an own goal and mm -hmm. Saka got an assist. Ah, okay. Or if you draw like the, uh, well, actually we kind of have this already, but like, if you draw a penalty and the penalty is converted, it's a fantasy assist, but we have okay. that. Okay. Well, somebody said that uh, Kobayashi yesterday in the Celtics game, he hit the post and then somebody tapped it in. That's an assist. Yes. Fantasy assist. I see. It's literally like I, I consider that to be like the, one of the worst fantasy, like scoring rules in the history of sport. Yeah. And everybody disagrees with me and I'm perfectly content dying on this hill that like, if you do something that does not, that is not a pass to somebody else who scores a goal, then it shouldn't be an assist. Yeah. But I do love the MS, MLS hockey assist. I, I actually find that to be more relevant than, you know, you know what you get one for? For uh, being the last player to touch the ball before a handball in the box. That's an assist. That's weird. Come on, guys. So, if you kick it off somebody's hand, you get a yes. assist. And, and the penalty is converted. You get an assist. That would be like um, that would be like in uh, Sora NBA if you were getting points for uh, attempted assists. Yes. A pass that leads to a shot. Absolutely. <laughs> a pass that leads to a missed shot. Right. Exactly. Right. Because it's not, it's not an actual assist. <clears throat> yeah. There's some really dumb... Uh, Jeremy saying not scoring the penalty shootout sparked rage during the global cup. So, Oh, I'm glad somebody brought that up because there were like tons of complaints to, to us, Sora data that like we weren't scoring uh, the leave the uh, Martinez penalty saves. Yeah. And then it's like, well, if you want that, then you have to take the minus two every time they give up a goal in a penalty situation. And everyone's like, yeah. no, 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 I don't want that. Never mind. I prob I probably told this story before on here, but I'm gonna tell it again. Way back when, like two years ago, when uh, 
NYC played uh, Orlando in uh, the playoffs of the MLS Cup. Um, there was a weird situation where uh, Gillespie from uh, Orlando, he <clears throat> made a penalty save, but he came off of his line, which is an automatic yellow card in that situation. He already had a yellow. So I was in like a, a is card. Is that an automatic yellow? Yeah, in the MLS it was. Oh, and um, I was in a situation where I was in in line for a card. And uh, the red card from the moment like that so rare does not consider like relevant to fantasy. Um, the red card from that event knocked me out of a prize situation. Wow. I was just like, hmm, I feel like I feel like um, this was just a lose lose scenario for, you know, for me to have a goalkeeper that's in a penalty shootout. That is wild. Yeah. And then that's the famous time when uh, their backup goalkeeper had a concussion. It was, I uh, can't think of his name, but then Rodrigo Sch uh, Schlegel came in and saved a PK against NYC and they ended up winning. Which you don't get points for either. And Sch Schlegel's a center, center back. So he. Right. He saved a PK in an MLS Cup semifinal game, which was like absolutely mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah, that's silly. That's silly. Uh, Didi Sorer also points out that FPL gives different points for goals based on the position. Hmm. Another thing that I find incredibly dumb, and I actually don't like it for Sorer either, is like different, yeah, different points based on position. Yeah, like a tackle is three points for a defender and zero points for a forward. Right. And yet counts towards the double-double. What are we doing? What, what are, we, are doing? we doing? So Mike Basson says, no one talks about the major issue with onboarding FPL players. How many are they predicting will be paying customers or just free-to-play farmers? <laughs> I think There's a big part efforts. of it is just brand two awareness. There. Uh, they want to be free-to-play People, let them be free to play people. If they want to come buy cards, they can come buy cards. I, I, we had a discussion about this um, on another Discord. I don't know what the expectations are for people. Um, my expectations are that EPL is coming. I think that it will not be a huge, we're not going to get a huge boom. This will just continue like further uh, the dominance of SoRare in the space. I don't think that we're getting a boom. I don't think we want a boom. I think booms just like disenfranchise people and um get people wrecked um so realistically don't want to boom we just want to continue growing and to continue growing we need the biggest league in the world yeah i agree with you fully um i think it's yeah the boom i don't think comes now anyway like adding the mid-season is kind yeah. of weird. And so, and for the amount of time it takes somebody to realistically get through all the onboarding and play the free leagues, like the, this, the season's going to be over by the time that they're like really ready to dive in. So I think we'll probably see a bigger jump because of the Premier League, like in July and August when when we start moving in, moving into the, the next season. And I think you're right that like a huge boom in a small period of time, like a boom of users is bad. Like, I think if we just keep that regular upward trajectory, trajectory, excuse me. Yeah. Then that's the kind of the best case scenario. Yeah. Yeah. Boom leads to people paying a hundred ETH for Jao Felix. Do we, do we want that? I changed my mind. Be honest. Be I, honest. I changed my mind. I would like a boom, please. <laughs> boom, please. Just a Jao Felix boom. <clears throat> By the way, I'm now a Jao Felix owner. After his three game suspension, welcome. <laughs> I had to. I had to jump in. I had to. Get... <laughs> welcome aboard. <laughs> yeah. XMK said, "I think keeping the J League is just as big as getting the Premier League, if not bigger." Respectfully. I think that's absurd. Yeah. I do think that's keeping awesome. the J League is important. Agreed. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But the Premier League is more important. The only negative to the to adding the Premier League is that then we can't say 
once they get the Premier League. And like, if it doesn't work, like, <laughs> we're still we're, early. we're still early. They don't we're even still have early. Yeah. Yet. As long as the Premier League's not here, we're early. And now, well, not now. If the Premier League comes in the next, whenever, a few weeks, what do we do? Like, what does so rare do to make to make it better? Yeah. Other than move the deadline, of course. <laughs> Just keep moving it. Just keep moving it. Although you mockingly say that, I think that's what people actually want. I don't think they want a, a stagnant, or that's not the word I was looking for. But basically, they don't want a set deadline every week if games are on at different times. I did notice somebody somewhere on my tweet deck this week was saying that they often miss the NBA deadline because it changes all the time. So they actually wanted like a, to keep the set deadline. But I think that's like a vast minority of people. Yeah. Um, like even, I, I, even FPL has a moving deadline based on their schedule. I kind of, I know what he's saying because I've had moments where I'm like 15 minutes till deadline and somebody will like put a Discord message out that's like, hey, the NBA deadline's soon. It happened this week with MLK. It was like super early. And you were yeah, like, oh, noon God. or something. Yeah. And if somebody, honestly, if somebody wouldn't have posted that in our chat, I would have just been like, would have never known. And then it would have been 5 p.m. going to set my lineups. Would have never known. I got an email this week from So Rare about setting my lineups. Like, oh, you haven't submitted your lineups. You're like, wow. do it. Three hours after the deadline. <laughs> Not even kidding. Three hours after it. Not great. Email's tough. Yeah. Or deadlines are tough or something. Um, I don't know. Losing the J League will damage customer trust. Really? Did we lose trust when we lost Napoli? Or PSG for a little bit? I think they need to not lose licenses for sure. Minero. I don't know if it has to do with trust. I don't think that trust is the right word, but um, yeah, don't don't lose licenses. Losing licenses is definitely bad. But they're going to, like, yeah. try not to. Whether, like, <laughs> there's going to be a point where somebody else wants to come up with a game. Somehow, Ultimate Champions gets a ton of money, and they're like, "Oh, we'll just outbid so rare on something." Yeah. Service is right. Losing one team is different than a whole league, but it could happen. Yeah. I mean, there's at, at some point they're going to have more competitors looking for league licenses. Hell, they could lose the Premier League. And I don't even, I mean, who knows? How long league. do you think that they're trying to? I mean, obviously, as long as they can get on these agreements, but I wonder, like, with that EPL, actually, didn't they? Wasn't that announced what the agreement was going to be, or what they? It was like three years or something. Yeah, I, I don't think it's it's in the league's best interests to not have like ten year deals. Yeah, and so so rare is kind of in that spot where they want to do longer, and right. the leagues are like, Why? you guys, you're an NFT thing. You might not exist in six months, so we're not going to give you a ten year deal or a five year sure. deal. So I think it's just these these things just have to be constantly renegotiated. And of course, it sounds you would think that like the bigger so rare gets, the more like they can demand from the leagues. But the leagues look at the total opposite. Like, oh, you now have more money to spend. So you're right. gonna spend it on us. Yeah. Every every negotiation is just a percentage increase in in the agreement. My favorite thing is seeing people talk about how like so rare has more leverage now. They're bigger now. Like somebody people in the same with the J League, like, oh, it's probably like a bigger part of the J League revenue. Like the leagues are have all of the leverage here. Like yeah. not having a license for some random NFT company to make <laughs> JPEGs of their players is not a concern. Like, so let's just give up on that. But maybe it should be. Maybe they maybe. should care more. I mean, they they have probably a lot more engagement and viewership overseas now than they've ever had why because 30 of us care what happened in the gank game like <laughs> yeah yeah I, I mean definitely not 30 we're all looking for illegal streams of eredivisie matches like <laughs> come on man like 
I think it matters, and I think it will matter more and more over time. But sure. we're not at the point where it matters. Right. But I think I think people really think it matters. Still. And I think they just need to realize that like Sony pays a lot more to to be a sponsor of whoever the hell they're a sponsor of than So Rare does to get on the Liverpool advertising boards. Yeah. Um, Van Devore grew because of So Rare. That's true. Yeah. RB Leipzig would have never heard of the guy <laughs> had he not had So Rare cards for the last four years. <sighs> um, not to change topics. Did did you see your boy started today? Mon uh, uh, Castro Montes. Oh, I. <clears throat> so I don't have a. I don't. I didn't have a lineup to put him in this week. And so I was like, when I saw that he was on the bench this past week, and I'm like, great, he's going to play this midweek when I have nothing. And then yeah. he'll be on the bench this weekend. They didn't play this weekend. I haven't done my lineups yet. I didn't have a goalie, so I did underdogs. But um, uh, I uh, I think I started him on the weekend when he didn't play. And then yep. I thought the same thing you did. It was like, oh, great. Now he's going to play in the midweek when I don't have a goalkeeper. Yeah. But then I felt confident starting him in the underdog that I played him in, which isn't going to matter. I'm not going to win anything, but whatever. Yeah. Um, Sean Etherington in chat here who posted a comment on the video yesterday and I accused Sean Newsham of, I accused, yeah, Sean Newsham of this being his um, burner account. So um, Mr. Etherington, if you are not Sean's burner account, apologies for that. But he said, <laughs> we need to be expanding, not shrinking. However, it's a poor look when leagues go, especially when there isn't, when there are many leagues in that area, like Japan being half of the Asian league. So trading the 18 J league teams for potentially 20 premier league teams sounds like we're expanding, but I agree. Asia's cut in half. <clears throat> yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't think that people want to hear that. <laughs> yeah. It's two more in case anybody is like get all the licenses. Get them all. That's the goal. Even the Romanian league in the um I'm trying to think of a weird South American league we don't have yet. Your Uruguay League. Somebody mentioned the Greek League. That, oh, yeah, that's uh, actually probably a pretty decent one to get. Yeah. The uh oh man, what was I just about to say? Getting rid of the J League. Damn. A League? No. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. So I can't remember what the last league they added was. Like the last full league. Mm. But like it's been a while since they it's added like Denmark league. or something, right? Or uh like the Danish league, didn't they? Well, add? They, they added coverage. They didn't add like oh. um a license. Oh, Jeremy said Croatia. Okay. Although I don't think it was that one. That I'm thinking, but whatever it was, what, the last league or the last team that they added, there was like this uproar. Man, what was it? Because it wasn't a big league. Because everybody was like, the maybe it was the sec, the whole second division thing. That, that's what it was. So when he added all second divisions, I agree with Marco Marco that they need the Portuguese league. They like it's absurd they don't have that whole league. Yeah, even though they have the only three teams that matter, but. When they added the second divisions, there was this uproar that they were like, this was not the plan. The plan was to get the best leagues and we don't have the Premier League. Why are we adding the Segunda division or Serie B? Like, this is absurd. And now that they're like about to add the Premier League, maybe, and they lose the J League, they're like, we can't lose the J League. We need them all. We need all the leagues. And it's like, it was always, we want all the leagues. Maybe they'll get into it. Maybe they'll get yeah. them all. It's just Does funny all the leagues league. include the Saudi league? I think there's like a really reasonable chance that they cover the Saudi league within yeah. the calendar year. Well, Paltrader is going to be rich if he isn't already. Yeah. Um, the I think Ronaldo is a reason for like. If I understand correctly, Opta doesn't fully cover the Saudi League. But and they might now. But like they have a reason to now. Yeah. 
like Ronaldo was a big enough and and uh, was it Nellis's podcast where he was like going through who else was on his team? Like there are players, there are a lot of players on what does he play for? Al Nasser, who like have so rare cards. Yeah. And Ospina and is, is Pity Martinez still there or not still there? It's, it's so funny you say that because I definitely sent a tweet once to Quinny, like within the last few weeks that he was leaving. And then, yeah, I think he's still there. He was like in a training photo or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but they, they, um, I don't see, well, uh, I don't want to say it this way. I, I think they're going to cover. What do you think the reaction would be from the community if when they added the Premier League, it was actually the women's Premier League? <laughs> I don't think it would be received as positively as the men's league. Whatever happened to women's, uh, they were going to do like add all these women's leagues and stuff and I haven't heard a peep on that. Do you think that they listened to the reaction of the community that they didn't want it? And they were like, okay. I think that they might have, which is weird because I think that the, the reaction from the community wasn't that they didn't want it. They just didn't want it in global all-star. That's true. That is absolutely true. They wanted, they wanted it in its own division and then maybe have like weekly challenges that involve all of it or like a global, like a, a another competition where like maybe the men's and the win, women's integrated, like a co-ed division or something. But um, yeah, it was weird that they like really were like building that up and then all of a sudden you just haven't heard about it and yeah. it's like over a year, I feel like. Where did you fall on that? I I was like, bring it on, but don't put it into Global All Star. Put it into its own division, and then have a new co-ed division. Hmm. Do you think now that they have like 150 contests a week, we, we could just add that as well? Because it's like, sure. oh, what's what's 17 more? <laughs> yeah, I was all for women's football cards, and I wanted them in All Star. Yeah. That's a that's a lonely opinion you have there. Yeah, yeah. Here I am, <laughs> without my women card, women's football cards. Yeah, I think there was a significant overreaction, but man, it was fun. Well, it just everybody... it really just matters if they would have done the PSG women's team or not, it, or it was a Leon, Barcelona. Leon, Leon. No, not Leon. oh Barcelona too. Yeah, Leon think, is like wins the Champions League all the time. I know Lyon has. I thought Lyon won the Champions League like five years in a row or something like that. Yeah. Barcelona like dominates their league though. Yeah, they like Barcelona. gave up four goals. They were like yeah. the Ajax of uh, the yeah, world. Yeah. yeah, Alexia. Yeah, they're great. They're great. Arsenal's really good. Chelsea's good. Anyway, did not expect us to get there. Women's Premier League. Let's go. Was that the F word? Female. My God. My you did gosh. It. There Get it is. Circle. There it is. Thank you to everybody for joining us live. If you guys could please hit the like button. As usual, many more people watching right now than uh, have liked the video. In fairness, maybe you just didn't like it. But if you did, if you could please hit the like button on that YouTube video, that's always really appreciated. And if you're listening to the audio version, please rate and review, share wherever you uh, listen um, to that. Uh, so yeah, we'll be back next week, probably with a different letter word. Maybe this is a thing that we do. Who knows? We don't even, yeah, who knows? We'll, we'll take see. suggestions. Yeah. Well, I mean, feel free to send them. I don't know if we'll take them. But <laughs> anyway, thank you, everybody, for joining us. And uh, good luck 